We interrupt our previously scheduled programming of Preview of Tomorrow to bring you a new segment, Traffic Trivia. For 100 points, in pre-COVID times, how long was the longest daily commute taken in major U.S. cities? Now, nah, just kidding, but the actual answers are striking. For someone in New Newark, New Jersey, the longest commute taken clocked in at 71 minutes. In New York City, a commute could go up to 82 minutes. And finally, for folks in Palmdale, California, some of their commutes, considered some of the worst in the nation, were facing up to 85 minute commutes. One of the most frustrating parts of commuting are traffic lights. How many times have you waited at a red light while no cars drove through the green light on the other side? Hello, my name is Mike Lake, and in this preview, I will be talking with Scott Murdoch, CEO and founder of Traffic Genius, a solution that synchronizes traffic in an unsynchronized world. Innovation. Resiliency. Discovery. Join Mike Lake, President and CEO of Leading Cities, as we explore the technologies shaping the possibilities of our future with a preview of tomorrow. Hello and welcome, Scott. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Preview of Tomorrow. Of course, I do want to welcome and, and thank all of our listeners and viewers for joining us for yet another episode. Um, today, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Scott Murdoch. He is the CEO and founder of Traffic Genius. This is a company that uses machine learning to optimize the timing of traffic signals along the path of, of greatest volume in our cities. So now, Scott, before we get into the issue of traffic, something I think we're all familiar with, probably too familiar with, um, and w before we start talking about Traffic Genius, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, first of all, Michael, thank you for having me here today. It's a pleasure to have everybody listen to me and learn more about Traffic Genius. So I'm a PhD in economics. I have been a data scientist in my professional career for about 10 years, the last seven or so in healthcare. And uh, I really focus on using machine learning to help the greater good. That's one of the reasons why I've been in healthcare for a while is, you know, I feel like the, the algorithms are really put to work to, uh, you know, it doesn't even have to be battling cancer or anything, which is, which is amazing. But even, you know, helping people get to the doctor faster, get the results quicker to the doctor, anything like that. And uh, I'm in the Boston area and I have two little girls. So. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, clearly, as I alluded to already, traffic is something at least any city dweller uh, or worker or visitor has experienced. Um, it, it, you know, the, the funny thing about street roads and streets is that, you know, the wider we build them, the more cars, the more traffic we seem yeah. to have. <laughs> um, so there has to be a better way of easing this congestion and, and just improving that flow. But before we get into that, in your words, tell us a little bit about how big is this problem really? Um, it's a huge problem. Uh, I'm going to paraphrase the statistics, but, you know, in the top five cities, I believe they waste near 70 minutes commuting total mm -hmm. each day. And that's the average. Right. So you think about that. Um, there's billions lost in productivity each year. You have the uh, greenhouse emissions, which, you know, obviously as we get more into electric cars, that goes away. But still, there's a lot of fossil fuel fueled cars on the road. And the time that they pollute the most is when they're idled, either parked or in a stoplight, something like that. And lastly, um, you know, until we get to the point of self-driving cars, which I personally believe 100% adoption will be a while, people waste time. Mm 
right? They their their time is valuable, and not necessarily in terms of work, just you know, spending time with family. Would you rather spend an hour commuting from the suburb to the city? in work each day or spending an extra 15 minutes by yourself getting coffee at Starbucks before work or spending time with your kids. It's just sort of like an unproductive, you know, general waste to people's time and to in in terms of productivity. And and of course, there is a, a value to that productivity. I mean, I've seen in just the U.S. alone, it's estimated almost $90 billion a year in lost yep. productivity. And, and so that's a that's a big price tag. But as you point out, there there are other things that are far more priceless, you know, being able to see your child before they go to bed at night or being home to have dinner with the family or or life and death situations. I mean, um, you know, when a when an ambulance is trying to cut through a heavy traffic area, it doesn't move very fast, even though, it you know, there is. Uh, ways made for them um, and a path made for them, it still slows down that transportation of someone who who could be facing a life or death situation. I mean, these are serious challenges. That and um, I don't have any statistics off the top of my head, but there are statistics out there that show that the more congestion that there is on a road, the more stop and go, the more likely there are to have accidents. Mm -hmm. Right. So then you have the cost, both financially and physically, potentially, depending on the severity of the crash. I did see, by the way, just just uh, this year, um, for the first time in, I think, many years, L.A. is no longer the worst traffic city in America. Yeah. It's now officially New York. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I was surprised by that, too. But, you know, COVID has a has played a role in that. But yeah, I, I'm sure. Yeah. No doubt about it. So, all right. I, I, we don't have to dri- uh, drive too deeply, no pun intended, uh, into the, the issue that is traffic. I mean, as I said, we're all familiar with it. Nobody likes it um, for every reason you can imagine. But what do we do about it? That's That's what this is really about. And that's where Traffic Genius comes into play. So what is Traffic Genius doing to solve this challenge? Uh, That's a great question. So we're a little bit different. Uh, A lot of people think when they talk about, you know, route optimization or just getting somewhere from point A to point B faster, they really think about the consumer side. They think about using Waze, Google Maps, Apple Maps, um, Garmin, a slew of different products right and that will kind of show you how to navigate the traffic and get to where you're going in the fastest route that's that's very good but the diminishing returns to improving that are getting smaller and smaller what is really behind is the infrastructure piece and that's where like the city comes in and it's not surprising Um, a lot of cities are trying but a lot of cities i would consider behind the times when it comes to technology especially when it comes to traffic infrastructure there's a there's cities in california like pasadena california that are doing lots of innovative stuff but then you have you know, cities like Chicago that I'm pretty sure a lot of their infrastructure is left from the 80s. And that's more of the typical in the U.S. than the um, than the exception. And, you know, I'm sure we've all been in this scenario where, you know, the classic example I give is when I came up with this idea a long time ago. And I'll, I'll go into it later. But you've been at a traffic light you know, wait at night if you're a night owl and there's literally nobody around, right? Especially if you're not in a congested area and, you know, you're stopped because you're a law-abiding citizen, but you're like, why am I stopping, right? I mean, there's just nobody there. And then you translate that into the day where there's a lot of people in traffic and you can still see the inefficiencies. You know, there will be a large highway where, you know, uh, roughly 70% of the traffic is flowing. And then the 
the cross street, 30% is flowing, but they seem to have equal times to maneuver in the light. And it's just an inefficiency. And that's where traffic genius comes into play. We use machine learning to work with the cities to understand the traffic volume, not just at the light. There's been a couple of companies out there that do it at the light. Uh, the problem with that is traffic is a very dynamic flow, right? It doesn't just happen at one light. Once again, everybody's been in that situation where you finally get through the one light only to get stuck at the next one, right? I knew and, that's what you were going to say, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, everybody, you know, um, <clears throat> I live in Boston now, but I used to live in Chicago for a long time, and th there's a lot of intersections that are famous for that. Yeah. Um, you know, you're like, oh. And when you first see it, it's really disappointing. After a while, you just kind of know that it's like the status quo. But that's something that, you know, if you synchronize the lights so that, like, when that one's done, the next one turns green, you don't get that backup that comes into, like, the middle of the intersection and blocking both ways, right? And so that's that's really where Traffic Genius comes into play. So tell, tell me a little bit more about how this actually gets deployed, and, and, and then I want to talk a little bit about the user experience. Eh? But first of all, how, do, how does it actually come to to operate in a community? Yeah, so traffic lighting is a very sensitive thing in most countries. It's considered sort of like a national security thing. So we can operate in a few different ways. Uh, we're working with a few different areas for pilot. And the way those are going to work is we're going to start with uh, them giving us historical data and us optimizing based off of that historical data where you know we think we can make systematic improvements during rush hour and off rush hour and improve the timing that way and the way that would work is we would give the light timing to the city they would plug it into their system the real advantage like the real future uh, would be to be integrated with the city and that requires uh, a little bit more level of trust and you know security and so we're starting slowly but we'll eventually get there and I, i'll talk more about the the real time when when we get later into the discussion sure well the, and in fact the discussion um is is actually coming quickly to an end it's amazing how fast these go by but i do want to understand that user experience so once it is integrated into a, a you know a city system um what does that what does that mean for the drivers? It means you get going to where you are faster. So our hope, our goal, um, based off of some initial results through our MVP, which is using not less than ideal data, is we can increase the throughput when you're not stopped at a light by about 15% which actually translates to quite a bit time saved on the road, and that's with a very naive algorithm. So what we would like to do is just start taking off, you know, minutes of time that you're save, you're spending on the road. If you're still driving, you know, we'd like to get the commute down to like, if it's 60 minutes, we'd like to get it down to like 45, keep improving it until there's just no you know, improvement gains like there's you're still going to have some traffic just because of the sheer volume of cars on the road and the distance you're traveling. But we believe we can really kind of start to knock down. You know, we're not talking seconds. We're talking por portions of an hour that we'd like to give back to consumers, you know, on their daily drive. Which is not insignificant in terms of quality of life, not productivity, et cetera, et cetera. So. Let's imagine, you know, 10, 20, 50 years into the future, this traffic genius uh, solution is is everywhere, you know, in, in all cities, uh, intersections, whatever. What does that mean? I mean, what does it mean? You kind of covered it already for the individual, but what does that mean for a community at large or, or even, you know, the environment, the planet? Um. It means quite a bit. 
I would say the most of the impact would be on the consumer. So let's take a couple of different stages. Let's take 10 years down the road where we're maybe not in every city, but we've got a good basis of cities. In those cities, I would like to be shaving time off, like I mentioned. In 10 years, the difference would be is we plan to give the algorithm to the city so they can install it into their system after we have a POC with them. And then what's possible is you're changing the light not based off of like cadences of like this is rush hour at eight o'clock we're going to change the lighting every 15 minutes you could be talking real time changes and the real benefit of this would be as you mentioned uh we could use cameras to see when an ambulance is coming so that we could change the light in the favor of ambulances or fire trucks or yeah. police cars uh, the thing that a lot of people don't think about that I think would be really useful because I, uh, I went to West Virginia University, which is a, a good university in West Virginia, but it's a university, a larger side university in West Virginia that's very hilly, right? Yeah. And so if there's a big sports area and whenever there's a game, there is a lot of traffic. Same thing if you're in Chicago and the Lions are playing or anything like that. Any kind of Lollapalooza in Chicago, any kind of sporting event, concert, traffic is just a nightmare. And if you have our algorithm with, you know, a way to see what the traffic is like at that at that light, like a camera, we can change the optimization in real time to adjust the flow of traffic it very dynamically just for that moment. And that's where the power really comes into play. Take it 50 years down the road. One of the questions I often get is, won't this be pointless once there's self-driving cars? Uh, no, because first of all, self-driving cars are still going to have to communicate with the lights. And yeah. if we control the lights, we're the best ones to communicate about the lights. The other thing people don't think about is, yeah, your Tesla or whatever might be able to stop at the light or you might not have to deal with that. You still have to stop at a light. There's never going to not be lights because the lights are there for pedestrians to cross the road. That's not going anywhere. Right. And so we see it as just simply a further level of integration in the future. And that's why we think it's a very powerful idea. It's not a niche. It's not a cool thing. It's a real necessity that cities that want to become more smart will have to do at some point in the future. Yeah. So tell us, for anybody who wants to learn more or to get in contact, what's the best way to do that? So if you're watching, I have my contact information up there. But also, uh, you can go to trafficgenius.co.com. Uh, my email is S-M-U-R-D-O-C-H, so that's like S Murdoch at trafficgenius.co. And uh, once again, Michael, thank you for having me here today. It's been a real pleasure. Well, thank you, Scott, for not only joining us on Preview of Tomorrow, but for the work you're doing to make our commutes and our traffic experience in, in cities that much lighter and easier. And thank you for tuning in to this episode of Preview of Tomorrow. Listeners like you are essential to advancing our efforts to drive resiliency and sustainability for all. I ask that you give us a rating on Apple Podcasts or whichever streaming platform you prefer. Your feedback helps us to grow and share these brief previews of what life in the future can be. In addition to thanking our guests today, I want to thank Peter Roy and Demetria Bridges for making this podcast possible. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and encourage others to also join us each week in previewing the possibilities of tomorrow. Preview of Tomorrow is brought to you by Leading Cities, a global nonprofit driving resilience and sustainability for all by unleashing the potential of the world's cities. Join them at leadingcities.org.